Hello dear students, welcome to Baiju's exam prep. So in our today topic, we will discuss what is basically volatile organic compound. So guys, uh, you know that this particular parameter is very important in our water treatment process because you know that guys, this is one of the parameter which we have to measure before giving any kind of treatment to our water, right? So what is exactly volatile organic compound that we'll discuss in this particular session in detail. But before that guys, let me tell you about uh, this particular type of video. You can get these type of video on a daily dose, right? And uh, you are able to understand the concept in a very short duration, right? So that's why you have to follow these type of video also guys on a regular basis, okay? So let's understand what is basically volatile organic compound. So first we need to discuss what is organic compound. As you know that guys, organic compound are those compound in which carbon, and or hydrocarbon is present then it is known as organic compound now these organic compound of two type basically one is volatile in nature and second one is non volatile in nature non volatile in nature right usually volatile compound is also known as basically these type of compound can convert themselves into the gas but non volatile compound are also known as fixed type of compound or fixed type of organic compound now why it is known as fixed why it is basically volatile let's understand in detail so what happened guys if you have any kind of solid or liquid right which is trying to change its state at a particular temperature like it may get converted into gas, then such type of compound is known as volatile organic compound, right? And non-volatile organic compound are those compounds which are not able to change their state that may remain same at a particular temperature, right? So let us suppose if you have solid or liquid, then solid or liquid will remain same. It will not changing its state. Then such type of compound is known as fixed type or non-volatile in nature. It remains solid or it remains liquid, right? So that's why these are the two different thing. One is volatile and second one is non-volatile. Now the question is, sir, how we can measure the volatile organic compound in our water basically, okay? So let me tell you, it is a very simple thing. Let us suppose guys, if you have a sample, right? If you have a sample of water, first in this particular water, you may have some solid concentration, right? Let us suppose suspended solid is there, dissolved solid is there, colloidal solid is there. So what happened if you put this particular sample at a temperature of 104 degree centigrade in the oven, right? So what happened? Whatever water you have, all the water will get evaporated. All the water will get evaporated. Now only the solid particle remain in the sample, right? That means this is nothing as this is our basically concentration of suspended solid dissolved solid and colloidal solid now the question is we need to measure how much concentration is volatile in nature and how much concentration is non-volatile in nature so let me explain so this is already heated sample you need to put it into the muffle furnace now place this particular sample at a temperature of 550 degree centigrade to 600 degree centigrade in muffle furnace in muffle furnace for one hour duration if you put it so whatever volatile organic compound is there that may get evaporated okay so whatever volatile organic compound is there that is trying to convert itself in the form of gas so these are nothing as basically volatile organic compound and the remaining part which is present in the sample is non volatile organic compound getting my point clear so guys how you can measure it it is very simple let us suppose the amount of suspended solid dissolved solid and colloidal solid we have in this particular container is w and let us suppose the amount of solid which is remain inside this particular sample is w1 if you take the difference of these two value you are able to get the value of volatile organic compound you can write it down directly w minus w1 that will be amount of volatile organic compound and in this case guys you know that the weight of container is included in this also weight of container is included but if you take the difference of it you will get the value of volatile organic compound directly right so i hope all of you are able to understand what is basically works and uh, 
how we can measure it okay so for such type of video guys you can join us further right and uh, that's it for today let's meet in the next one i hope you have enjoyed it and you are able to understand the concept also bye bye take care thank you so much for joining the session